Okay guys, welcome to the 2020 Cafe. This series of videos is showing you how to put some basic preparations in place. We've already looked at making purees. We've done onion, garlic, chilli. And what we're doing now is we're going to do a series of videos that are going to show you how to use these. You have them around, it's very easy to make these products. So if we can look down, we'll look at the ingredients. This is going to become a courgette celery, apple and raisin chutney. So this condiment's going to last for a long time. It's got sugar. This is brown, lovely soft brown sugar. It's got oil and it's got vinegar. And these three here are going to be the preservatives. So this is going to last for a long time. This will go into a clean box or into a kilner jar and will last in the fridge for uh, a long time. I can't even tell you how long really. The longer the better. I wouldn't use it on the day that I've made it. I'd try and leave it for a, a month, maybe a bit longer. Let it mature. So let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got our courgettes. I've given these a wash. We've got some celery. We've got some apples. These are nice firm apples are going to hold their shape when they've been cooked. We've got salt, which we're going to add a little pinch at the end. We've got a, a flavouring that's going to go into it, and this is star anise. It's beautiful for condiments like this. It's got an aniseedy flavour. We're going to pick this out at the end, so I'm going to remember how many of these I put in. I'm going to put in probably for this many courgettes, only two of these. It's quite a strong flavour, and I don't want it to overwhelm it. But I'm going to remember how many I put in so that I can take them out because although you cook them, they don't go soft enough to eat. So we want to take those out. We're going to put a base set of flavours of garlic and onion. And remembering we've got these already pureed in the, uh, in the fridge. Brown sugar is going to give it a sweetness. It's going to give it an attractive colour. And it's also going to help preserve it. We've got some sunflower oil that we're going to use to fry off the base ingredients. And then, again for flavour, but also as a preservative, we've got some vinegar, and this is uh, straightforward white wine vinegar. You could have some fun using raspberry vinegar and different flavoured vinegars. Today I've just got simple white wine vinegar. Okay, so I'll uh, get on and show you the preparation for this, and then we'll get on and cook it. Okay, guys, here we are making a uh, chutney. This, uh, this chutney is going to be tremendous for us to have around, it's got lots of uses. It's going to work beautifully with cheese. You want a nice piece of mature cheddar cheese and this homemade chutney. So you're adding value to uh, a simple piece of cheese by making a ploughman's, so it's a lunchtime type of dish which would include some bread, it would have some items like maybe bits of apple, some celery, maybe some grapes. You'd have um, a lovely big piece of cheese. We might do up here, we might also do a meat option and put some sliced ham on it as well. And then a nice big uh, ramekin with this chutney in it. But this also is going to work nicely in a sandwich filling. So again, maybe a cheese um, or a ham sandwich. So it's got a variety of uses and that's a lot of what we're trying to achieve here. You could also use it to flavour a base of a curry um, because it's nice and sweet and it's got a good vegetable flavour. The star anise will help as well, so that could even be used to puree it up. It could uh, use as a base to a sweet curry. Okay, so if we look down here, we've got the, uh, the ingredients, the courgette, top and tail, and then go through. I want this to be fairly rustic. Fairly decent sizes, okay? Not too small. I don't want it to break down in the cooking. I don't want a puree. So I've got them together. I'm left-handed, so I'm pinching the knife between my thumb and my finger, wrap the fingers out the way. This hand's the guide, and I'm rolling, rolling the knife. You don't want to hear that. That's not good practice. And the knife blade is touching the fingers and this hand is the guide telling me how big or how small. So if I wanted a very small chop this hand would move very slowly and that means the knife would cut more and you'd get a small thing. If you want large, which is what I want, fairly large pieces, then this hand moves fairly quickly. So we can prepare our courgette. Celery. 
Again, it's been washed. Go through it, pinch it together. Again, fingers at a guide. With the apple, just taking a little knife and going through to take the core off. And then reasonably big pieces. It's quite a nice big crunchy uh, item this. So back through that way. Keeping in mind what we did in the other video, I've got garlic puree here and I've got onion puree. So very, very straightforward when you add in some oil, the vinegar, the brown sugar and a little bit of salt and pepper and you've got a very nice chutney. So let's get over to the stove and we'll get on and cook this. Okay guys, here we are at the stove and we're making our courgette apple and celery chutney. We're very keen here, we're lucky that we have a farm and they provide us with all sorts of produce during the year and I think this is a good point to make that this chutney works. You would think about things like celery and apple working together with raisins and cheese, they would work beautifully on a cheese board or a ploughman's and that's why I've chosen these but I really don't want you to see this as the one recipe for chutneys. See this as a way of making them a platform rather than the only way. So have a think about other things that you could put in there. There's a multitude of stuff that you could put in there, okay? So really use your imagination. Let's get on making this one. So I'm going to go in with a couple of spoonfuls of vegetable oil. The electric uh, stove here is not easy to control. I've got a bit of water in there somewhere as well. It's a bit of a pain, but we'll be alright. So this is the onion puree. Heat, okay, so if it's too high, take it off. I want to get a little bit of colour on this. This frying isn't worrying me. I'm moving it around, it's not getting chance to burn. The pan's now cooling down, and I'm going to use a, 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 a part of the stove that isn't as hot. So I'm going to now go in, a couple of spoonfuls there of garlic, move back onto the stove and there we go. Okay we want to get quite a nice caramel colour to this. Obviously the brown sugar is going to help us get a colour but we also caramelise all the natural sugars in things like onions and then you get a lovely natural flavour to it. Some other flavours you could use, rhubarb would work in here, gooseberries would work beautifully, aubergine would be nice. With aubergine you could go quite spicy with it. Okay, so I'm starting to get a nice little bit of colour onto this. I'm going to go in with a star anise now. I put five in there. I'm going to remember those five. I'm going to stir it quite gently. I don't want to break them up. I want to release the flavour, but I don't want all the little bits in there because at the end I want to be able to pick them out. Okay. 
Now I'm going to go in with the courgettes. Okay, so I don't know if you can pick this up through the, uh, the microphone, but it's a good heat. There is frying going on. I don't want this just to sit warm. I do actually want to get a little bit of colour on it. So hopefully you can pick up there. There is actually frying going on there. We'll need to leave this on the stove now to colour for about another 10 minutes. So we'll come back in a little bit, okay? Okay, 10 minutes later, if we can come in and have a look here, we've got a beautiful colour coming now. Really lovely and rich. A little tip for you, try not to leave things up the sides of the pan. They're going to dry out and stick, and they're not going to cook properly. So always work the products down the sides. Okay, so that's lovely. I'm happy with that colour. The courgette's still got a nice green, fresh colour to it. So let's get in. I'm adding now the apple and the celery. And then I'm going in with some sugar. Remember this is going to be a flavouring and a preservative. Leave it on a decent height a decent heat and then that will help to just caramelize that sugar a little bit as well again adding a lovely richness to it I'm at a disadvantage here with the old electric it doesn't respond very quickly so I want to take that up a little bit but it's going to take a moment or two for that to happen working the product down the sides I want to actually boil down any juices that are there. I don't want any, any juice. I want to cook it out. So we're now getting up to a boil, which is meaning that I'm ready to add some vinegar, which will now boil down. So that's the sugar all dissolved. We're going to go in with a dash of white wine vinegar, give it a certain tartness, and it's going to be delightful with that rich, strong cheddar cheese. So again, wait for that to come back to the boil. Much, much nicer cooking on gas. But that's what we've got here is electric, so that's what we're dealing with. I'm going in with our raisins. I'm going to go in with a bit of salt, a pinch of salt, another preservative, and it's going to bring out all the flavours beautifully. Final stir before I just leave it on the heat now to simmer for a probably about 25 minutes. I'm going to keep my eye on it. I don't want it to go to a mush, but I do want things like the celery to have lost its rawness, but I still want a bit of crunch. That'll now sit there and simmer, as I say, 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then we'll plate it up. Nice bit of mature cheddar and a little bit of salad. Okay. Okay, so here we have our finished chutney. So, what we need to then do is to get into a clean container. I'm using a kilner jar and we're going to let it cool down, get the lid on and then we're going to preserve this in the fridge, back of the fridge, label it up and keep it, I would say, at least a week or two. Probably a month's going to be better for this to mature, for all the flavours to combine nicely. 
This one has been around for about a week and it's starting to come together. As I say, I'd probably leave it a little longer. The marriage here is going to be between this chutney and a nice piece of cheese. So on the plate here, just a simple lunchtime. Chutney, mature cheddar, a Sussex cheddar, some homemade granary bread, a little salad. Very nice indeed. Other ways you could use this, as I mentioned, you could blend this and use it as a base towards a curry paste because it's got everything in there that's going to be tasty for a vegetarian curry or maybe a meat curry. You could get some puff pastry, lay this onto the puff pastry very thinly, put some cheese on it, make nice little uh, quite large volivants, be quite nice for a lunch dish. Okay, enjoy!